Well, investors are freaking out at Disney. So, and Wall Street is freaking out at Disney. Disney is not the cash cow that it once was. And it's been hemorrhaging money these last few years. It's almost like they're trying to fail on purpose. Um, and it's like they can't, you know what's weird? It's, it's almost like they can't even see it. Like we all see it. Like, what are you doing, Bud Light? What are you doing, Disney? What is wrong with you people? Do you not see what you're doing? It's like you're running with scissors. You don't do that. Here is a Wall Street Journal piece this week about Bob Iger and how he's basically captaining the Titanic. This is literally what they're, they're calling it. Or the, uh, the Titan. What do they call it? The Titan? Um, yeah, the Titan. <laughs> the Titan, the Titan submarine. Is it, is it a simple matter to go woke and go broke? Eh, maybe. I don't like that saying, but I think, I think it's too simplistic. Uh, but I do think it's a phenomenon right now that economists are going to have to look into and they're going to study this period in schools and colleges from, you know, years from now, they're going to look at this. Do pedantic companies uh, turn people off? Do they offend you? Um, trying to talk down to you or preach to you? Are you turned off by that? I absolutely grow tired of all the, the moralizing in Disney products, but is that a measurable economic sentiment? Um, that's a real question, right? Is that a measurable economic sentiment? Look, look at the box office records for Disney's last nine movies. A YouTuber called Valiant Renegade has done an analysis of the following movies. His specialty is taking these movies, analyzing the business as Hollywood, um, uh, the business as Hollywood, and he's great. He looks at the box office numbers from the following movies. Lightyear from Pixar, you know, the Bud Light, uh, Buzz, Buzz Lightyear movie. Thor, Love and Thunder, Strange World, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, uh, Little Mermaid, and Elemental. And he does not include Indiana Jones and the Dial of Doom or Dial of Destiny, which was so bad that my children uh, begged me to leave, <laughs> which is so sad. Think about this. Indiana Jones going to the theater, see Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, like those movies were amazing. They're still amazing. I go back and watch them still. They still hold up. Raiders of the Lost Ark is arguably one of the greatest action adventure movies of all time. If you look, it's a four, mm -hmm. it's a four star movie. Or if you use a five out of five, it's a five out of five star movie. It's a classic movie based on the original serials that people would see in the theaters. Those short, like 15 minute serials, those action serials that always had a cliffhanger. They were amazing. It was amazing. Uh, and now they're just awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, so watch the numbers here as he explains this. Watch what he says about the dwindling profits of Disney feature films. Last couple of years, we've seen those numbers dwindle to next to nothing. That's mostly because of two major problems at the Walt Disney Company. Number one, the films they're putting out just aren't reaching the same audiences that they used to, even while other studios like Universal and Paramount are still generating massive legitimate blockbusters. Disney continues to miss the mark from every studio that they have, and they're not even done yet for this year because Lucasfilm is on the table up next with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And as of right now, that's going to be ringing up yet another loss for the Walt Disney Company unless something radical changes. But where are we to this point? Let's take a look at a chart. What you see here is a chronological timetable beginning with Lightyear in June of last year and running through Elemental, June of this year, 2023. Production budgets are laid out, and we have used the stipulated budgets listed on places like the numbers. We haven't adjusted any of these budgets for information that we've previously reported on with production overruns, massive reshoots on certain things. We're going to leave all that out of the equation for right now and just go with the information that is publicly available. And if we go from north to south in the first column, you can see the production budgets tally up to a whopping $1.735 billion. Global prints and ads, that's the global marketing spend. Again, the tally there, about another billion dollars. So then he puts these calculations in here and someone in the chat just said, hey, you're not five years old. Don't go see movies. Grow up. What? Love movies. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm never going to grow up. <laughs> what a sad, what sad. Yeah, what a sad, sad sentiment. What? Really? Don't go to movies. Grow Stop up. Stop entertaining yourself, Clayton. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to go sit and stare at a waterfall for the rest of my life. Wait till um, I find out you play games, too. <laughs> yeah, and guitar and, 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 oh my God, don't do any of that. Uh, anyway, he takes into account the rental market by location. Um, take a look at this. So this is the rental market by location. And, uh, wow, <laughs> pretty awful. I mean, just just awful. So let's get into his final calculations of these films. Listen. Now, if you've already picked up on the fact that there's a big problem here, congratulations, you're right. Remember on the first slide, how much money did the Walt Disney Company spend starting with Lightyear and going all the way through Elemental Now? Those eight films, how much did the Walt Disney Company spend to produce and market these films into theaters? $2.75 billion was the total WDC total investment. Again, you can see down there, this is Lightyear, Thor, Love and Thunder, Strange World, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3, The Little Mermaid, and Elemental. So if Disney spent $2.75 billion to make all those films, how much did they actually get back in rentals from theaters? $1.86 billion. That was the total theatrical rental income, again, for those same eight films. And I want to stipulate, you'll see down there, The Little Mermaid and Elemental are estimated. Of course, they have not yet completed their runs, but I think my estimates on them are very fair. Again, go back and look at the slide. You can pause it on there and look down the entire list for yourself as long as you like. So I'm not a math whiz or anything, but it seems like... There would be a loss there. Yeah, that would be about an $890 million loss with a $2.75 billion spend and a $1.86 billion intake. That's what we're left with, about $890 million in losses on these last eight films in the aggregate. So you have Sound of Freedom, number one at the box office, right? You have... Um, Jason Aldean with a number one country song because, uh, you know, being censored. It's like maybe these companies should pay attention to what's actually happening out there right now. So is Disney maybe going to self-reflect and ask themselves why people don't like their movies anymore? Here's the main reason and lesson that they could learn. Avoid movies that are this pedantic. Annoying others with your own valued rules and life lessons in an ostentatious and trivial manner. <laughs> no one wants to be lectured about how to live when they are watching movies. That's the reason you go to a movie, right? But Yeah, commenter. <laughs> exactly. But that is what we get. We will get if we go see Snow White, apparently. So Snow White, of course, not only have they taken the German fairy tale with a protagonist that is supposed to have white skin... Literally, that's what the Germanic character is based on, the fairy tale. Skin as white as snow. In the fairy tale. Lips that are rosy red. I think it's like, if I'm remembering, it's like hair as black as ebony. Skin as white as snow. Snow white. Well, and did you... I mean, isn't there, isn't there a whole thing like who's Pierce the... Morgan? Go ahead, Philip. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say the whole who's the fairest of them all. Like that's part of the story. Like right. that's mirror, literally mirror the, on the, the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall part. <laughs> exactly. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I was gonna say, did you see the interview with Pierce Morgan and the the uh, uh, dwarf? I can't remember the guy's name, but like they were, he was arguing with a guy that's like they shouldn't be dwarves because that's condescending. He's like, so you're saying it's kind of like condescending. You're taking like one of the roles that like it's hard for dwarves to get roles. Period. Right. <laughs> And to take roles like Oompa Loompas and stuff like that away from them because you feel like it's it's bad to have dwarves in there for whatever reason. Like, like why? You know, there was there was no reason. And this dwarf was arguing with this guy that was saying that it was wrong. And it's just like, you know, so, th so Peter even Dinklage? that they're woke yeah. they're all like, you know, diverse people. And it's it's just it's insane. It's insanity. And so now not only do they have so, you know, this Germanic fairy tale with a protagonist that's supposed to have white skin as a key attribute and they cast her as a Latina. So now the Snow White will be Latina. They the also have of Snow White. They, exactly. They also have taken the mythical dwarves. These are mythical dwarves. Like if you've read any fantasy novels, you've read Lord of the Rings, you've read uh, R.A. Salvatore books, anything like that. 
Dwarves are not people with human beings with dwarfism. These are mythical dwarves. They have nothing to do with human beings that have dwarfism. It's a to it's not even the same. Just like, you know, just like ogres are not a certain type of human. Well, maybe we could think that, but you know what I'm saying? These totally or orcs. Orcs are not a, like a some sort of a human being. It's a mythical fantastical character. Anyway, now they've cast the mythical dwarves as people with uh as people uh, people of various heights, races, and genders. Look at this. I mean, oh yeah, I can tell this that looks, one's non-binary. You can see it. I mean, this look. Look at this picture. This looks like something out of like a Renaissance fair, doesn't it? Like a bad Renaissance fair. Like if you went to like, here we are in Pennsylvania for the weekend. We're gonna go get a funnel cake and go to the Renaissance fair. And yeah, well, who are it you looks guys like supposed the to be? Team. We're the seven. We're the seven dwarves. No, you're not. Maybe the guy in the front is, but what are you guys? Seven dwarves. What are you? Are you kidding me? Yeah, we're the one dwarf and six idiots. What are you saying? <laughs> are you serious? You really couldn't find anyone. I mean, give me a break. Um, and they they warned us that they were going to take a different approach with this film um, to the dwarves after the Game of Thrones actor Peter Dinklage uh, called the Disney movie company quote effing backwards for planning to cast dwarves. So a different approach means not employing human beings that are, have dwarfism who might actually have loved that job. It's like, as David was just saying, it's hard enough to get that job. How many available openings are there in Hollywood for a job that requires a, 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 um, a, a small person? And now we need to give it to a tall person? It's the seven dwarves. You're gonna, why don't you hire Shaquille O'Neal for crying out loud? He hasn't been doing anything for a while. And since we don't care about the height part of it, put Shaquille O'Neal in there for crying out loud. He was we, great in steel. He was great in steel. Get, you know, get Pamela Anderson. She's not doing anything right now. She's not a dwarf. She was great in barbed wire. Use her in this, in this. But all now think about all of the unemployed dwarf actors out there who would actually like to i mean if you're like if you're a human being with dwarfism and you're growing up you're thinking hey if i could ever play like in a live action snow white film as one of the seven dwarfs like that would be probably the role of a lifetime if i'm an actor and, and disney came calling would i be offended that they chose a short person for this role no i'm i have dwarfism i'd like to play that role but now, now they can't even get that job because of woke politics. Well, and, like, and what are they arguing? What is the point they're arguing? Like, we don't, we want to be diverse. We don't want to, like, there's something wrong with dwarves. Like, what is, what is wrong with little people? You know what I mean? It just makes it seem like there's something wrong with them, so we can't cast them because it's not woke, it's not diverse. Like, it just makes no sense. Well, I mean, in Game of Thrones, I mean, Peter Dinklage plays... He, he he literally plays a, a dwarf. That's the character in Game of Thrones. Yeah, could you imagine they're like, okay, this is a dwarf, but they give it to another character. And then it's like, okay, so, but you're a dwarf, but you're not small. So, you know what I mean? It's like... Well, yeah, you're going to pretend you're a dwarf, so you're going to act small. So, we're you know what? We're going to give this job to Idris Elba. Because, well... well and that was another thing that this this person was uh, was pissed off about on Pierce Morgan because they gave the Oompa Loompa role in the new Willy Wonka to um, uh, oh what's the English actor um, Hugh Grant Hugh Grant they gave it to him and he's like CGI'd into a little person when they could have given that to somebody too even Peter Dinklage <laughs> and then you just posted in our redacted chat here said Dylan Postal uh, who's yeah that's uh, the guy. Oh, he's upset that, okay, he's the one that wants, I thought he was, the, so he wants it to be, anyway, um, these yeah, roles are made that. for, act, okay, so do he wants to be a dwarf in this film? He is a dwarf. Oh, yeah. okay, no, but I'm saying, never, I, I'm sorry, I'm confused here, never mind. So he was complaining about it, that's the, that's the guy yes. that was complaining that they were going to use small people, little people in the movie. And he was no, happy. He's, he's complaining that they didn't. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. He's complaining that they yeah. didn't. Okay. Gotcha. Good, good. Anyway, they warned us that they were going to take a different approach to this dwarfs um, thing after Peter Dinklage did this. And I mean, they would have loved this job. And here, have you ever seen the, the show life's too short with Warwick Davis? It was hilarious. It was a Ricky Gervais um, 
It was a Ricky Gervais show. It's a great show. It's literally about how hard it is for him to get a job in Hollywood, even though he was in Star Wars. <laughs> he was in Harry Potter. <laughs> he was in Willow. The whole show is about how difficult it is for him as a little person to get a job in Hollywood because there's not enough dwarf jobs in Hollywood. And here you take away the seven dwarfs from some, I mean, this is just amazing what's happening. Um, oh my God. And by the way, Willow was such a huge flop for Disney that they pulled it from Disney plus the new Willow TV show. I'm sure he would it love to so have bad. been offered. I, I didn't even watch it. I mean, the, I watched the movie in the oh 1980s, God, it, but yeah, it was, it was the, the only show I've ever I've like hate watched. I've never done that. Before. Usually if I don't like a show, like I'll stop watching it. But it's like every episode, I'm like, this can't possibly get worse. And then it would. And it was just like watching Disney urinate on my childhood is basically what that, what that TV <laughs> show was like. It was. <laughs> Someone in the chat just said, way to cover the most important story of the day, LOL. Hey, we've covered our constitution. We covered censorship. We're covering, uh, the, we covered the Ukraine war. We're going to be covering Iraq. Uh, we're covering one of the biggest companies in the world who's gone through woke cultural politics and literally destroying its company be, by doing this kind of bullshit right now. This is about our culture. Like this is about our culture and this is exactly what corporate America is doing. And it's just, I mean, just look at Bud Light, right? This is absolutely destroying these companies. Um, I, I think he would have loved to have played the role of Doc, right? Warwick Davis. He would have loved to play Doc in The Seven Dwarfs. Not only this, uh, not only this dwarf business, they've also written um, the prince out of the script. So the, the, the prince isn't even in the script anymore for, the Snow, for Snow White. So he can't kiss her and bring her back. Here's how the lead actress, Rachel Ziegler, and Gal Gadot, who's playing the evil queen, were talking about how we don't need a prince anymore. We're, you know, it's 2023. We don't need a prince. We don't need any of that. This is a totally different Snow White. Watch. You said you were bringing a modern edge to it on stage. What do you mean by that? I just mean that it's no longer 1937. And we absolutely wrote a Snow White. She's that is, not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince. And she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. And the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave, and true. And so it's just a really incredible story for, I think, young people everywhere to see themselves in. Snow White is running for president. <laughs> I'm launching my campaign. I am. So Disney is like in a tailspin because at first they came out and they said that those images of the dwarfs weren't real. And then they walked it back and they said, yeah, that actually is from the film. And so they're on this sort of like total damage control right now. I think, you know, Natalie, we and I were talking about this earlier today. She said, you know, some fairy tales have to exist as cultural relics. They just they were they're there a hundred years ago. Right. Or longer. As a middle-aged woman, as Natalie was telling me, um, my wife is, uh, what, she's, I'm 46, so she's uh, 44. Um, she says she doesn't love the idea of a woman who is evil and bad just because she's aging and then insanely jealous of the younger Snow White and youth and beauty, and that's the story. Um, either you tell the story the way it was as a cultural relic, or you don't tell it at all, and you don't remake it into some weird, modern, woke fantasy. Um and so in order to keep making these crappy, pedantic movies, Disney may have to sell off other parts of their company. So they held an off-site meeting yesterday. Disney held this like emergency meeting yesterday. And Bob Iger like hinted at maybe selling ABC, selling off some of their streaming properties like Disney Plus, which is losing a ton of money and millions of subscribers right now. Uh, so there was a big freak out about this. Um, they're bleeding subscribers. Disney said that Disney Plus would be profitable by the fall of 2024, and they're closing in on that mark, and it's not, and it doesn't like look like it's going to be profitable. So the biggest question is right now is, like, will Disney learn from this and make some changes? Uh, will they stop pretending the strong female characters are a brand new concept? Will they recast Snow White or go ahead with this pedantic lesson in diversity that nobody asked for at all? Um and if past is prologue, they're going to go ahead with the Snow White cast and more, you know, more park princesses like this. This is uh, tr uh, trans Aurora. Uh, so this is a trans transgender princess at one of the Disney parks. This is 2023. This is what's going on. You know, I just as to put a put a pin in this, you know, like the the Indiana Jones movie. The re one of the reasons it was just so god awful it's like here you have this iconic character, Indiana Jones, who 
is portrayed as a bumbling fool in this movie and can't do anything right unless the woman swoops in to help him, right? Or give him the correct answer. And even when he then finally figures one little thing out in the movie, she has to step in and take credit for it. Like, we, you, you can't give us our iconic male character anymore. He can't be a strong male character. And there's a total difference between that movie and then the new Mission Impossible movie. Is it wrong to have you know a, what, a strong point. male lead? And then you have a woman who's like, I, you know what? I couldn't open this door. I just didn't have the strength that you had as a lifelong agent in the mission, in the impossible mission force to come open this strong, this gate or this thing that was connected to the train. Help me out here. And Tom Cruise swoops in and he saves the lady. Is that so bad? But now you know it's Disney's writing it all out. It, it, this just shows you that they're catering, catering to a small minority that can't maintain their 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 profits like they're not going to stay in business if they try to cater to this small crowd it's the movies that are catering to the majority the the top guns the the sound of freedom these movies that are just like they just they just make movies they're not trying to be diverse for diverse sake they're not doing all this woke agenda stuff they're just making movies yeah. and those are the ones that are succeeding so it just it's it's pr promising to see that those are not going to succeed so yeah. i think it'll continue to fall off you have Maverick, which was excellent, right? S huge success at the box office. You have the new Mission Impossible movie was excellent, and I was and I came out of the movie and my kids, we my, my, were like, "That's how you make a movie." It's amazing. Literally, some similar tropes from Indiana Jones, like train scenes, things like that, and you literally did the polar opposite. You have a giant turd of a movie in Indiana Jones. And how sadly that movie has fallen. And then you have this new Mission Impossible movie, which was excellent. And, you, you know, you could eat two boxes of popcorn with that one. That was a pure thrill ride. Absolutely fantastic. Well, you know what's sad, too, is like Harrison Ford is such an icon. And to, and to send an icon off into, the, into history with Ugh. that on his record, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like a smack in the face to his legacy in a way. You know, my son loves, because I love those movies, and my son plays piano, right? And so so do all my kids, but he he's the oldest, and so he plays a lot of it, you know, regularly. And he loves John Williams scores, right? So he's playing the, the you know, the theme from Indiana Jones and plays the John Williams score, you know, dun, 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 dun. you know, he plays the full theme and everything. And, um, and, uh, and, and he was playing it all in the lead up to it. We couldn't wait to go see the movie. And then when we got back, like he just stopped playing the song. Isn't that sad? Uh -oh. Like the movie was so bad. Sad. He's just like, yeah, I don't really even want to play that song right now. Cause wow. I just don't feel and they like killed Han Solo. I mean, like look what the, the Harrison Ford, come on, man. Yeah. Awful. There's your Thursday night movie break, but this is what happens. Go woke, go broke. Um, and that's what Disney's app. That's what's happening. Disney right now. See if they can do a full reversal. I would love to see them do a full reversal. Go back to these great movies of our childhood and you know, all of that. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at redacted. We are live every day at 4 PM Eastern time, trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of redacted rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join. Join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.